when you think four weeks out, first couple weeks of June. Yes. Right, Amanda, let's go. All right, go up. Bring them back in here. All right, if I may, that's the family or part of it. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to just do my job, accommodate people, and, you know, and that's the kind of disrespect I get in my court. And I'm going to tell you right now, and the rest of the family members, we have problems in this trial with outbursts. There's going to be some people going, going next door. We're, we're not going to have disruptions by family members in this courtroom just driving around. I understand. May I suggest we have a five-day pre-trial? Man, you need to come forward, up the lectern. That boy's birthday is next month. He would have been 19 years old a month after that. It'll be a year since both them boys have been killed. And that man's still walking the streets, enjoying his life. There's a box of ashes on my house of an 18-year-old boy that didn't get a chance to learn from his mistakes because their client decided to end his fucking life. And it didn't have to be okay. Now, you have to understand, I, I have to listen to other things. If I, if I make a mistake, as an example, and forcing the case up for trial, when one of the whole counsel's clearly not going to be engaged and be able to do it. I probably well, set up the first one. I do, but what okay. about the man who killed the boy? He ain't even here okay. because he's well, sick, because he's not feeling good. I, I think I made it pretty clear to the defense that he's going to be here for all future hearings. Did I, did I make that real clear to the defense? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. But what I can't have you doing is, is I apologize. disrupting the proceedings, and I just, because we've already had some situations with this in the, in, in the past, you know, I'm not, during the trial, going to be allowing disruptions concerning rulings, concerning outcomes, with whatever happens, all right? I, I'm trying to conduct this. I, obviously, you can tell that, you know, I'm very disappointed to have to adjourn this case. And, you know, but, but under the circumstances of one of the co-counsels, and in addition, there's some discovery issues that need to be ironed out. If it wasn't the, the dire medical circumstances that were represented by Mr. Hopkins, who's never been to show me an attorney that shirts in any way his responsibilities to meet his court obligations, but this seems to be a, a compelling situation. And, and I'm fairly sure if he was here, he'd be telling me that he wants both of the attorneys that he hired to be here and available. If that's the case, under the circumstance, I think the appellate courts, even if there was a conviction, might reverse it in the future, okay? Okay, so I just, just wanted to be, you know, more mindful of, you know, your decorum in the courtroom in the future, all right? Because this is going to be an emotional trial for, for, for lots of people, okay? And, and, you know, no, no judge likes to have it to, to deal with direct contempt situations. So I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate your apology. And I'm going to try to do everything I can do to, to get this case going on the June date. 